Okay, we'll go ahead and in the interest of time and everyone, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, Mr. Henderson, if it's okay, I'll do a brief introduction like we have been, and then I'll turn it over to you. Very good. Wonderful. So thank you all for joining us on our final parent power group workshop with Mr. Andrew Henderson. He has been in the industry for many years and for over 20 years, he was the director of the executive director, excuse me, of Families for Children, Inc. and is currently consulting program officer for FFC Spiritual and Behavioral Health Center. FFC is a behavioral health program operated by Families for Children. Mr. Henderson attended the University of San California, Santa Cruz, where he received a bachelor's degree in economics in 1981. He attended Cal State University, Los Angeles, where he received a master's degree in counseling in 1998. Throughout his professional career, Mr. Henderson has been an advocate for youth and is credited with developing innovative programming to address this population. He created the Foster Youth Empowerment Workshop for Families for Children, the FYEW, the Foster Youth Empowerment Workshop, was a person-centered emotional and spiritual development program for Tay Youth. Mr. Henderson has a long and distinguished history of collaborating with public and private organizations to enhance the quality of life for youth and families. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Henderson. Thank you. Um, so we are at our fourth module in our four module um, program that supports youth and families in terms of home-based education. So tonight's session, we'll be uh, talking about monitoring your child's educational process. You go to the next slide. So um, much of the work I do now, in addition to doing consulting work um, that Rebecca mentioned, is I also am a foster parent recruiter for Wayfinder Family Services. So if anyone on the call has ever considered um, being a foster parent or finding out more information about that, you see my email there. I'd be more than happy to talk to you more about what it takes to be a foster parent and some of the things that you can expect to experience as a foster parent. We can go to the next slide. Okay, so the agenda for this evening is the purpose of monitoring, using calendars and schedules for school success, importance of how, importance of and how to network, and monitoring summary examples. So before we move on, um, I know you guys that are experiencing remote learning because of COVID are really looking to develop some tricks, if you will, or some kind of, well, they call them cheats now in, in terms of uh, the internet on how to enhance your child's success because every time you open a newspaper, well, you don't open newspapers, I'm really dating myself, but anyway, <laughs> every time you, you look at online articles, they're talking about how unsuccessful online and remote learning is for children, especially children of color. So these sessions are designed to really support success, especially success in our communities as it relates to remote learning. Um, we can move on. So an overview of monitoring. You and your learners, teachers, have the same goal to provide the best education possible for your learner. To reach that goal, working together and supporting each other's efforts is essential. Next slide. So parent involvement is vital to a child's success in school. We pretty much all know that. Monitoring is the process of information gathering and action planning to help you guide the education of your child throughout the schooling years. And so the purpose of monitoring is information, keeping a record of your child's progress. Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. Keeping a record of your child's progress. Um, and you will find that much of the information that we share this evening, you may already be familiar with, may have learned in other sessions and other training environments before, but you can never hear it enough because what happens is we forget. I know for me, and I think it's the same way for many people, is that we'll be in a room of 10 folks listening to somebody lecture about some information. And as soon as we leave, we might retain 10% of what the information was about. So we need to keep reminding ourselves 
putting this in front of us so that, oh, well, that's right. Let me try that. That's something they talked about that I might have success with. So again, you may hear things that you're familiar with. I'm affirming that. I'm putting that back at the top of mind. So let's try it again and see what happens. So keeping a record of your child's progress. Um, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but I think now, given the challenges of remote learning, it's super important to do that. Communication, being aware of your child's accomplishments. That's pretty self-explanatory. Involvement, preventing difficulties by intervening before conflict occurs and support. Nurturing and cultivating your child's potential. So the purpose of monitoring, I think, can really be defined by the third bullet point. Preventing difficulties by intervening before conflict occurs, right? That means we're not waiting. We're monitoring on a consistent basis and probably can prevent some potentially destructive uh, events. We can go on. So parent participation. So you see the school plus parents equals student success. So parent participation generally peaks in elementary school and drops off substantially at the secondary level. However, the secondary level is a time when learners require a great amount of support and guidance in organizing. Having several classes and more than one or two teachers makes organizations more complicated. Establishing priorities. There are more choices as learners grow and their world expands. Managing their time. There are more demands for a variety of sources or from a variety of sources in setting future goals, choosing careers and or post high school education opportunities such as trade schools, apprenticeships, community colleges or four year colleges or universities. So again, this uh, information was written when remote learning was not the standard. Now to this the standard, I think we can kind of say, okay, maybe I need to be more engaged because when you had the teachers assisting or other kinds of folks assisting because you had more resources, then you might have backed off on how much monitoring and how much participation um, you engaged in. But now it's full on. So hopefully some of these tools can help you do that without feeling overwhelmed. That's the important thing that we're trying to impress upon you here. There's ways to structurally be more engaged in a remote learning environment without feeling overwhelmed. That's important. Okay, we can move on. Using calendars and schedules for school success. The consistent use and maintenance of a family calendar in the home facilitates parents' involvement as partners in their students' classroom education and as an audience for school functions. In addition, the family calendar can be used to establish a schedule for the student's study, work, and leisure activities. As students grow and develop multiple responsibilities, they should also be encouraged to keep a personal pocket cal calendar or to keep posted individual calendars in their rooms. Now, scheduling, um, when you are staying at home, um, might imply a lot of assumptions. Oh, I don't need to be that structured because we're here all day. No, you do actually need to be that structured because nowadays children, because it's, their environments are so chaotic, they're feeling so disenfranchised from environments that they're used to, environments that they need to strive, that structure is extremely important for them now. So again, the school calendar is one of the ways to, to take care of that. We can move on. So family calendar, the family calendar is a way to identify each family member's commitments by the day and date, the nature of the activity and the time it is to happen. Highlight each family member in a different color with family events for all members highlighted in another specific identifiable color. Place the calendar in a prominent place, such as a bulletin board, the refrigerator door, next to the phone in the family room or in the front hallway. Most schools provide a yearly schedule of school activities, which can be reviewed by the family members in order to know relevant dates and times on the family calendar. We can move on. 
So the family calendar continued. The family calendar increases the visibility of family commitment to educational activities, provides a focus on events, activities of value to the family, increases family communication about schedules, facilitates intra-family planning for important functions, and establishes lifelong educational skill, organizational skills and patterns. The family calendar can be planned yearly and maintained monthly to include all important family events such as birthdays, church and community activities, election dates, family meetings, and other activities important to the family. Now, um, there's a couple of you who have been on previous calls. Um, I am wondering, when I mentioned family calendar, can anyone chime in on what it might also relate to? And family is in the word I'm looking for. Don't be shy. How about family what? meetings? Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just trying to understand your question. I had, I, this is my first um, uh, group I've attended. Um, yeah, well, a, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't expect you to, 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 to know that stuff. Um, there was some information that we covered in previous modules, and we talked okay. about the family meeting. And so the family meeting and the family calendar are kind of companions to each other. That's what I was looking for. And if this is your first time, and I mentioned it before we started that all the other sessions are online and can be accessed through the Wooten Center website and uh, through their Facebook page. So um, please feel free to go back and reference those because every now and then I'll be referencing some of the sessions we've done in the past. Okay, thank you, I definitely will. So we can go on. So the individual calendar, an individual calendar acts as a tool to help teach children and teenagers to organize their time, it assist them in developing a sense of inner control that is extraordinarily important. Learning to schedule their time, to set goals and establish timelines and learning to use their time wisely. An individual, individual calendar becomes a written daily schedule, providing a memory aid, which is especially helpful to teenagers as they have many things to remember, such as chores to be done, homework assignments, appointments and planned study time. Next. And so the individual calendar continued. Many students require a written daily checklist of chores and other responsibilities to be completed when told to do something as simple as taking out the trash. Many children simply do not remember, thus setting up minor conflicts. This problem is easily prevented when each child has his or her own written daily checklist. The children should be instructed to check off the assigned tasks when completed. Now, we talked about family meetings and the importance of how that centers the family and creates a communication pool for everybody. So one of the pieces that you can cover in the family meetings are the calendars, right? They can bring them to the table. You can talk about achievements. You can talk about planning. That becomes a very structural piece of each family meeting that you have. So as I said, they really complement each other. And uh, please, any if there's any questions, just just jump in. Any time that you might uh, would like to ask a question, need clarification. So, plan study time to use a calendar to improve school success. It's suggested that a specific daily schedule for study be established and noted on the family calendar, color coded for each child in different colors, and also on the student's individual calendar if one is maintained. This process will help the student see that there is time for both study and for other activities as well. Stay up to date on schoolwork, meet deadlines and avoid last minute rushes to complete work and improve grades and school participation. So what we are doing here is we're removing the anxiety around no structure, right? We're removing the anxiety around change for these young people who are so used to traditional kinds of educational environments. And so that's been eliminated, right? 
In addition to that, their whole social development has been severely challenged because of the stay at home order, right? And then on top of that, there is the danger of the pandemic health impacts. So you have youth who are not fully developed adults having to manage all of these crises. And so a way through all of that anxiety inducing stuff, if you will, is structure. And that's pretty much the key here in this session. It's about structure and it builds on the other sessions. Um, any questions so far? Next slide. So the elements to consider. Elements to consider when scheduling plan study time include blocks of time for study. So you divide the study schedule into blocks of time when fatigue is not a major factor. The optimum time will vary by individual. And remember in previous sessions, we talked about individual learning styles. So again, these are complementary to those sessions. After school may be best for some students, early evening may be better for others. Some children and adolescents prefer to take a nap in the afternoon and study after dinner when they feel more rested and nourished. Study breaks. Divide study time into reasonable time periods and schedule study breaks. The breaks allow for rest and serve as a reward for time spent studying. The amount of concentrated study time may vary by the age of the student by subject or by physical condition. Study breaks should be generally scheduled after 10 to 15 minutes of study time for younger learners and 20 to 35 minutes for older learners. Each student's time preference is different. However, and scheduling enough time for student breaks allows the student to, to produce his or her best effort. The weekly semester schedule. Students should establish and follow a weekly or even a semester schedule, which encourages long range planning. This type of scheduling becomes especially important as students increase their commitments to outside activities, such as sports, jobs, music lessons and youth groups and other clubs. Certain academic subjects may require a longer period of study time, one or more days per week. For example, a weekly test on Friday, may indicate a need for the parent to schedule time to quiz the student each Thursday night. Knowing that a term paper is due on a particular day may indicate the need to schedule time on several nights before the due date to work primarily on completing that assignment. Homework checks. Begin the ritual of checking homework when your child is in elementary school. Use this time as an opportunity to appreciate the child's efforts to discuss progress on long-term projects, to reinforce the element or reinforce the importance of maintaining the agreed upon study schedule and to negotiate necessary changes in the established schedule. Now, you are probably saying to yourself, well, golly, I have two or three children in school and I also have to work. Where do I find the time to do this? All right, <laughs> there may be a lot of questioning about that. So I would suggest that again, the family meeting that was covered in other sessions is a place where most of this work can be done or the tone for getting it done can be set during that period of time. So that when you do some of this monitoring activity, they're already prepared for it because it's been discussed in the family meeting. So that means you have to spend less time when you actually do the monitoring because the students are, have already been prepared for it again through the family meetings and through that opportunity in the family meetings to communicate any challenges they may be having around their scheduling or communicating any other kinds of issues. So again, as we schedule these elements here, it works for your time too, right? It's not just their time, it's your time too. This makes you more efficient as well when you need to be the most efficient. Okay, the next slide. 
So elements to consider continue by using a monthly or yearly family calendar, as well as encouraging the use of an individual calendar by each learner. You are assisting your child, your teenager, in acquiring skills in time management, planning, and ta task completion. So time management, planning, and task completion. I would imagine these are skill sets <laughs> that will serve them well as they march towards adulthood. So they're all, there's, in this process, there will be many, many, many value added, if you will, elements to their developmental process of becoming a young adult and a young responsible adult. So uh, there are a lot of benefits to these um, processes that are not necessarily indicated here. So these are important life skills that carry over to high school, college work, and lifelong learning. Next slide. So networking, the concept of parent networks has existed for quite a time, quite a long time in one form or another. In past generations, extended families generally provided networks of caring individuals to help with small children, share babysitting, and gather to discuss children's activities and progress. However, our increasingly mobile and often impersonal communities and the frequent lack of extended family structures has caused many parents to take a second look at the power inherent in networking. Wow, is this ever important now? Every parent on this call, um, you guys are so fortunate to be a part of the Wooden Center family. Uh, they, she has created such a community of support there. Um, you guys, because not every parent has a go-to place like this. Um, one, and then number two, you guys are all to be congratulated on taking the initiative to get the information because many folks, and, and I just, I, I'm so sorry to have to say this, but you know, it's true as, as, as well as I do. So many of our parents just don't take advantage of the opportunities out there. And typically, and you guys probably find this true as well, the ones that <laughs> probably are in the best shape are the ones that take advantage of opportunities and the ones that need it most are the ones that don't take advantage of it. That's been an, I mean, there are exceptions to the rule, but that's generally been my observation and my high level of frustration. Um, networking is just so critical now. And please, any chance you get, I would advise that you uh, look to networks to support your challenges through these times because you are not alone here, that's for sure. Um, the next slide. So parent networks or the potential for parent networks are already present within many of the traditional forms of volunteerism, PTA membership, school newsletters, and fundraising events. Some communities have actively initiated parent networks to protect the safety of everyone's children by organizing chaperones for parties, walking with students to and from school, and by taking turns on formal neighborhood watch programs or patrols. Next slide. A more active type of parent involvement is available through participation in groups or organizations, aha, such as the Wu Ten Center. It is through organized parent groups that many other support activities for education are generated. Rebecca, that was so well done. Um, although parents may initially complain that finding time to attend meetings is difficult, involvement in workshops and projects helps parents connect with other parents in a much more meaningful way. Let's leave that slide up there for me. Um, I'm not sure this, um, how long have you guys been involved in the Wooden Center? Could someone just chime in and, and, and talk about that? Wake I'm up, people. Seeing, I'm not seeing the slides and I'm on my phone. That might be the issue, but I'm not sure. Are, are there parents seeing the slides? Yes, the slides are on there. Oh, okay. Maybe this is, this is my first year. And and I and I and I'm on Andrew for my uh, my granddaughter. She's been affiliated uh, with Wooten for some time, but with the COVID and everything, and having to do the home studying, you know, uh, working from home, I wanted to really be uh -huh. able to um, see the areas that maybe I can I can help her with. 
So I appreciate it that the, the calendar is going to be real great, real good. Well, good, good. I'm, I'm glad you, you're getting something. And I would just really, really encourage everybody to stay connected to the Wooten Center because, uh, you know, we need our lifelines right now. <laughs> we really do. Yeah, for um, sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We can go to the next slide. Parents can also volunteer in school libraries, provide tutoring, share special expertise in enrichment programs and or assist. So you can see this, this particular slide has more to do with um, non-COVID when we were kind of quote unquote, a normal society. Um, you can go ahead and switch to the next. So monitoring summary in early years, you are encouraged to do the following to monitor your child's progress and facilitate his or her continued achievement. Attend elementary school orientations and registration. Get acquainted with other parents and, ch and children. Explore the school with your child. Meet the adults at the school. Listen to your child and discuss his or her daily activities. Visit the classroom when those days come again. Be sure you and your child understand the teacher's rules. Okay, so be sure you and your child understand the teacher's rules. Now, obviously when we're having live sessions, when you're in school, that's important to do. But now everybody is kind of, or at this point they should have worked through a lot of the, the, the newness of what remote learning looks like because teachers, hadn't done it before either. And I think that is kind of lost on, in this process. This was new to teachers too. So they're having to make adjustments. So in, rec in recognizing and respecting that, it, we want to find out what their expectations are at this point in terms of my child's uh, participation in remote learning. I know they have achievement expectations, they all do, uh, but frankly, not a lot of them know how to get there. They're getting their, their training too in remote learning at the school level, but this is where you take responsibility for your students learning. That's the bottom line. The teachers cannot do what they normally do. And oftentimes we over depend on what they do. Teachers are not psychologists. Teachers are not law enforcement. Teachers should not be disciplinarians. Teachers should not be any of these things except teachers. And it's our responsibility and always has been to send our children to school prepared to learn. The teachers should not be, 27 of those kids in a 30 kid classroom should not have to suffer for one or two children's behavior. They just shouldn't, That's, that, that, that should not be. So it's important that we understand it, Right now, it's a remote environment, but when that changes, hopefully what we've learned through these four modules, if you go back and take a look at the other three, will make a better learner once children can return to the classroom. That that would be my hope. Next slide. Can I say something just with that? Yeah, of it's course. So it's so important, the message that you're sending with behavior and how we should expect our kids to behave. And I'm gonna say something that has even impacted my child's virtual learning, not only mine, but kids all over. Kids are zooming in um, inappropriately to, um, you know, Zoom classes. They're, they're, I don't know what they call it. Like they come in under, you know, an assumed name. It's happened many times in my son's classes mm. and, you know, make inappropriate comments. So that behavior trait is present, not just in the classroom, it's present even in virtual learning. It's happening a lot. So the teachers have to lock kids out. My son missed the whole class once because someone went in as his name and I was in the room. So I knew it wasn't him. I had to email the wow. school and say, it's not him. So, you know, this is happening. Kids really, really, that's an enforcement that we just have to do behavior and respect and, you know. Wow, thank you so much for that. 
Um, and I think it kind of goes back to what we talked or I talked about before. Um, those parents who should be listening to this are not here, right? Because you sound like an extraordinarily conscientious parent. Um, and your kids are lucky to have you. Um, but you, again, we, we are responsible for our own child's learning. I think that's becoming more and more apparent now. Um, and with that recognition, um, we can become more stressed out. Um, we can, because we still have to, as I said before, work. So anything that we can do at Wooten Center to support this transition, we are all about that. And I'm hoping this is part of supporting that, that process. Any more comments about that? Has anyone experienced what, um, I didn't get your name. Um, who was commenting? Um, but do we have any other parents? Not uh, Ruthel. Ruthel? Okay. Yes. Oh, yes, Ru Ruthel Bailey. Yes. yes. And my oh. son, yeah, my son is a, a seventh grade student at City School. His name is Kyle. Wow. So does anyone else want to share their virtual experience, their virtual learning experience with their, their student? Wow, everybody's getting straight A's. Well, we're, we're on a wonderful call here. Um, Hello. Yes. I want to share, I have a, my son is uh, nine years old, he's in fourth grade, mm -hmm. but he's having really trouble with the distance learning. Mm -hmm. I, I realize he's not for him because he's, he, at the time he's home, he thinks like uh, it's no, he can make the difference between, uh, between getting the, the school and being at home. Um, right now, I I have a problem with that. Any suggestion for that? Any help? Yeah, well, as I said before, um, you know, he's at the developmental stage where the structure of live learning makes all the difference in the world for him. Um, and I would suggest, again, in, in looking at what I'm sharing with you tonight about putting it on a calendar, putting a schedule on a calendar. And also, so is, is this your first session or did you go to the other ones at all? Yes, uh, my first session. Okay. Session. I would invite you to take a look at the other sessions that we've had because what's discussed there is um, something called the family meeting. That's a very general term okay. and everybody seems to understand it, but what, we do with our family meetings in this in this program in this educational support pro program is make them much more effective much more communicative and really gives you and your fourth grader a chance to talk about just what you're talking about now but in a way where he feels that he's listened to where he can feel respected and kind of feel in control of his own learning process because oftentimes we're reactionary right we are, um, you, you come home from work, um, if you're still allowed to work, or I'm hoping that you still have a job, or you have to work remotely. So your adult responsibilities are enormously more stress-inducing than they were before. Just off the chart, more stress-inducing. So okay. <clears throat> what we're trying to do here is say, okay, let me take a deep breath, because we also talked about mindfulness, we also talked about some self-care tips in those other sessions because you have to de-stress, take away some of the anxiety that allows you to focus on some of these learning tools, which will then allow your children to feel more secure in their learning environment, be able to navigate the change because for a fourth grader, change is just, they have a struggle with it. So there's a way to okay. process change. So what we're doing here is processing change as much as we are anything else. I hope that helps. 
Okay, thank you. So, um, Can I make a quick suggestion? Oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to ask, um, we can go, you said, to the Wooten Center um, online and get the additional uh, uh, meeting seminar? Right. There, there, there are three more. This is the last of four. So there yeah. were three more prior to this. Well, I, I came to one, and this is the second one. So I'd like to, to go through them all. And I'm thinking I can go through them with my granddaughter watching so we can kind of discuss as we go since it's already... Uh, you know, on uh, on online or on the screen, it's not. You know, um, that'd be outstanding. So, where do I go to? Um, do you know? Rebecca, take it away. Yes, yes. So, uh, the videos will be found on the Wooten Center page. So, maybe you want to put it in the chat. Is, okay, is what's the, the actual website? Is what is uh, Wooten Center? Hold on one moment. Let me pull it yeah. up. You know, can can you put it in the chat, Rebecca? Yeah, that's perfect. I'll put I'll put both locations in the chat. Thank you. So everybody can can see those and to take advantage of them. Yeah. Hey, um, hi. This is Naomi. Um, hello, this everyone. I'm, I'm hey. director at the center. Sorry, I was trying to click on my button to chime in, but uh, Rebecca, we're going to post them to our YouTube channel. So by Friday, we'll have all of them posted on our YouTube channel, and I will put the the link in the chat right now. It's a uh, youtube.com slash Wooten Center. Okay. Okay. The yes, queen is Naomi. Oh, Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you know what? I, hey, you know, I'm sorry. I had, uh, let me just say something for a, a minute here. Uh, Miss McSwain and I um, have recently um, connected a few, few months in, th through the pandemic. and. Um, I've been doing this work for almost 40 years and I have seldom have I met someone who has the insight commitment and just desire to, ch to change. I mean, a lot of people talk about it. They, you know, get frustrated going through all, but you're, you're connected to an organization that is invested in making things better for you in a real way, not just talking about it, but giving you the tools to do it. So I have the utmost respect for the Wooten Center. And uh, Naomi, thank you for being who you are and what you do. Thank um, you, I uh, appreciate it. We just, we just love our kids and we know <clears throat> the parents are the most important person in their life. So certainly we wanna be able to connect. So I'm just glad to see everybody here. So thanks for coming. And, and I'm, here also, for, I'm here for my grandkids. So Andrew is awesome as you can see, so I'm, I'm learning. So thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Well, you know what, and you're cheating too. I should. Uh, this is just between me and Naomi, since nobody else is listening. She's supposed <laughs> to be on vacation, so anyway, I won't go. Oh wow! No. <laughs> this this is vacation learning from my family too. So, and thank right. and, th and thank you, Naomi. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and thank then, you so much. All right, thank you, uh, for I'm glad you're here. Yes. So the next slide. So monitoring summary for the high school years. So assist your learner in selecting the appropriate school courses. Discuss career plans with your learner. Visit a career fair with your learner. And you can do a lot of this stuff virtually now, career fairs. Attend college and university information evening program. Visit one or more colleges or universities with your learner. Check at your place of employment for available employer related scholarship information. Review your learner's educational and career planning record folder in the school's guidance center. Make an appointment with your learner's counselor for information as well as to validate your learner's progress in educational and career planning. Use available computerized post high school planning programs with your learner in grades 9, 11, and 12. Request review and plan to apply for available financial aid with your learner's post high school opportunities. Okay. That's a handful. So let's drill down, right? We're not gonna be overwhelmed by any of this. Why? Because of two things. One, we're gonna talk about these as goals for our high school learner during the family meet. Two, we're gonna calendar. So each one of these bullet points, right, can be calendared over a two, three month period of time. They don't have to be all done in a compressed period of time. 
but the importance here is planning, right? So you is this busy parent who now has to worry about all these things. You can go look at that calendar on the refrigerator, go look at it wherever you put it and say, okay, today I'm gonna do this. So you spend 15 minutes of your day doing this, but those 15 minutes of all of this activity add up to what? Enormous monitoring results, enormous achievement in moving your learner forward because they see that guess what? I'm an engaged parent in a way where I'm not screaming at them for not doing this. I'm not feeling frustrated because they're not, no matter what I do, they're not able to do this. You know, this is all about reducing anxiety. It's, it's no magic bullet here, mind you. But at least I'm hoping this gives you a roadmap. That, that that's all we can do here is give you a roadmap. You try some things, some things don't work. You try other things, but you know, raising kids, all of us know, you know, there's a whole bunch of books about raising kids, you know, right? But ultimately, you got to trust the process at some point. Trust what you do. If it doesn't work today, it may work next week. But what you want to do is engage your children in the process. That's what the whole, and it's called FAST, Families and Schools Together. It's a four module program, but that is at its core what it is. It's engaging your child in the learning process in a way that allows you to feel comfortable in what your child's doing, and it allows your child to feel comfortable, confident, and achievement focused. We can go to the next slide. So the monitoring summary, every year. Review the school handbook with your child yearly, noting activities and dates. Fill out a copy of the educational record and their samples provided previously in this module, or they will be. Know your child's school schedule and room numbers. Visit the school. Meet your child's teachers, counselors, and principal. Attend orientation meetings, open house, and back to school night. Maintain active involvement in your child's education. Join and attend a PTA meetings. Record your child's basic working levels in mathematics, English, and reading, usually noted on the report card. Plan a regular time and place for your child to study and do homework. Encourage your child when he or she is having difficulty with assignment. So I'd like to go back to an earlier question. Um, the parent who was talking about her, her fourth grader, um, and the challenges um, she's facing with a fourth grader. All the parents on this call are obviously very committed to their educational success of children. But there are so many online resources out there. I just want you to know that, and you're probably already Googling questions you may have about certain things, but I, it, it, it's just, you're just so much further ahead of the game in terms of having resources than parents were when we didn't have these online resources. So remember, it, it, before you get just overly frustrated, access some of the, you know, Google that question, okay? And then hopefully Googling that question will Google out some of that high anxiety that, that you'd be experiencing at the time. And again, you can always go back to these sessions as well. The next slide. Okay, question and answer time. Um, covered a lot of material. Um, I know you guys are on this call for a variety of reasons. Um, is there any specific question or concern that hasn't been addressed that um, you'd like to talk about? Well, I... I guess it's a bit of a concern for me. It's, this is Rafael. I um, have to, and this is also a suggestion I can make for, for the parent of the fourth grader. Um, I actually, and I was blessed enough to do this, but I actually made the decision to take a leave of absence from my job because I knew my son would have a difficult time staying focused because he's never had um, homeschooling. He, you know, thrives in an environment where he has structure, 
And, you know, he's a seventh grader. So <clears throat> he lacks the discipline to stay focused. So I knew if I wanted him to learn something this year, I needed to be here. And again, I was blessed enough to be able to do that. But <clears throat> I think what has helped a lot is to, I have established an area for him with the desk. That is where he's required to take classes. He may not lay in bed in his, well, I'm, you know, I've kind of relaxed on the changing of your clothes. I wanted him in a, a real routine every day. But sometimes I, you know, look over his shoulder at his classroom and I see kids in bed with the blankets up to their chins, relaxing. And it doesn't look to me like they are in learning mode. Now, maybe some kids can learn that way. I don't know if it really matters. But I think having a structure every day, getting up, brushing your teeth, eating your breakfast, sitting down in a designated place where all of your materials are, you know, at hand's reach um, and enforcing that so that it becomes a routine and they're not just all over the place. I think that helps. It's helped, you know, in my home. And maybe for the fourth grader, that might help having sort of like create a little classroom in your home where they have to take their classes there every day. And they may not get up unless they have to go to the bathroom while the teacher's talking. You know, you just have to treat it like it's a class, a classroom setting, in other words, I'm sorry. Wow, very powerful, Miss Bailey. So um, makes me think about the network piece we talked about tonight, right? Um, that's what we're doing now. Those were some enormously powerful suggestions. Um, I'm not sure if it was the last session or the one before. We talked about vigilance. So what you described in terms of your expectation for your seventh grader brushing a seat, this is a schedule that he has. Um, one of our modules covers rituals, and that's exactly why they're so powerful. Um, the, 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 you were you're just so on target on everything you said. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments um, or feedback? Um, good evening, everyone. I've actually was lucky enough to have attended all three of the um, sessions, um, three or four, I don't remember now. Um, but I, I definitely have um, taken a lot of what was information that was given um, and really thought carefully of uh, all the suggestions that were given. Um, I have three kids that are doing online learning at home. And I think for me, the most difficult uh, part of it is with my high schooler who is a freshman this year. And so just trying to figure out how to um, help her and while at the same time not feeling like I'm just like on top of her all the time um, for trying to get her work done um, while also balancing, you know, two other kids who are in elementary school and their assignments and work, which is a little bit easier to manage than the, the high school, um, my high schooler, because, you know, then you come in with a 15 year old and all that comes with that. So that makes it a little more difficult as well. Yeah. Uh, I can imagine. Um, thank you for, for joining us for all four sessions, because what you um, br brought to mind here is a saying that goes like, it, behavior is an expression of need. Um, I'm not sure if um, any of you have, have heard that before, but behavior is not because they tend, they tend not to be because they're bad people or evil child. It's an expression of need, what is being communicated with that behavior? And so often in these virtual learning environments, what's being communicated is please give me structure, something that gives me a way to navigate. And so again, I, I would look to using elements of this, thing. again, every family has their own system and what works for you may not work for me. If it's working, it works, period, end of story.
but again, I, I, I go back to, to the structure piece. Um, now more than ever, that's what our children need in terms of their virtual learning environment. So please use this as you will to kind of establish some of those structures that may benefit you and your child. Anybody else? Um, I just want to share, I'm not sure what was shared already because I came in kind of late. But um, one of the things that I found um, was really helpful where my son is concerned in uh, virtual learning is that the school provided us with a schedule and it was a, it's a very detailed schedule that included breaks, uh, break times for them as well. Uh, there, uh, it gives them their, the time to log in for their live classes. And then it also provides time for them to do the homework assignments um, throughout the day as they're uh, attending their live classes. And so, and, and I'm glad that they did because even if had they not done it, I would have probably did it myself because he's the kind of kid that he needs structure as well. And that was one of my concerns when they first started virtual learning was, would he have um, the structure that he would normally take place at school? And so the, the scheduling, that they provided for us allowed him the opportunity to now, um, what are we, what, four months in, <laughs> to, um, to log on to his own classes um, by itself. I don't have to remind him anymore. It was a struggle in the beginning. I had to keep on it. You know, what time are you supposed to be on? What time are you supposed to be logging on? Or why are you, you know, why are you sitting here in the, in the kitchen? Aren't you supposed to be on class? But now, um, because of the scheduling, he was able to, he's able to now navigate himself through the virtual learning process. Without my help, um, sometimes I'm sick or I, you know, get down in the daytime. So he, I look up and he's on class already. Nice. Um, then I teach him to, to get on five or 10 minutes early, even if the teacher hasn't started the class yet. Um, go ahead and log on. It's going to put you there in the waiting room or it's going to let you know that the teacher hasn't started the meeting, but at least you're already there. Um, the other thing I found was helpful was I gave him a little timer so that he, if he is outside exercising or if he is in the kitchen, um, you know, eating lunch, then he sets his clock five minutes before class starts so that that way he'll know it's time for me to get back, um, get to class or get to the computer. So, um, you know, just those little nuggets, those little things were able to uh, help him navigate through the virtual learning process. And I know not all parents are at home. Some parents are um, working, um, but if someone is at home that can help assist with that type of process, um, I think will be very helpful. Even when I'm not here, my mother um, helps him and she makes sure that he's on too but even with her my mother's 72 years old so even with her she's not as alert but because he's now been trained to do it in the beginning and it took us about three weeks Don't tell us more. He was able to do it. so I just wanted to share that I'm not sure what our uh -huh. but I thought it was helpful hey I'm in the parent meeting I was on my phone but I switched it to my computer that was very powerful um, you know, what it occurs to me is that um, every parent that has been on these calls, uh, these last four Zoom sessions, have talked about what's worked for them, right? Tips for successful virtual learning. Um, I would love to see you guys kind of maybe email the Wooten Center um, some of what you're having success at right? And maybe um, we can talk about, you know, um, tips to successful virtual learning from a real standpoint, because if I'm a parent, what you just mentioned, I would love to have. Because that, you know, the whole timer when he's exercising piece, what's that? That was powerful. That was great. But I'm sure there are many, many parents that are doing things that are successful in their homes during these virtual times. Now, I'd love to hear about them. 
I yeah, have I a that, I love that timer uh, uh, routine. That's great. I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab one. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I have a, a funny little suggestion. I was watching a movie recently, and um, there was a mom who was um, a nurse. She was a you know in home support nurse, right? And so she couldn't be home with her kid during virtual learning. So she got a camera, just like the little security cameras that people get, you know, in and around their homes. Um, she got a camera and she set it up in one corner of her child's room and she could see what was going on from her, her phone. It, wow. And they do have this, you know, technology. And mm -hmm. as silly as it seemed in this movie, I thought about it for parents who have to work it wouldn't be beyond, you know, a reasonable, um, you know, thinking to say maybe some kids need that. If you don't have anybody, there are some parents who literally have no grandparents, no family members, their kids are at home alone. And these security cameras actually work. You can interact with your kid, you can talk to them, they can talk to you, and, and the, um, the apps are, are, you know, on your phone. Wow. And you can monitor what they're doing. <laughs> I mean, these are extraordinary times. So we have to think in extraordinary ways that or might creative seem, ways. you know, yes. Mm -hmm. That's Amazing. good. That, that, that's great. Now, can I speak from the side as, um, you know, like an agency that's working with the kids? the kids who are logging in and, you know, what we see on, on that side. <laughs> um, no. Do we want to hear this? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's mixed, right? You know, yeah. so just, just like you said, every, every kid is different. And, and we see, you know, like I say, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's one of the reasons, you know, why we were having this session, you know, uh, why I came to you um, Andrew, you know, almost like crying, you know, saying we got to get some information out because, um, yeah. you know, some some kids are not logging in or when they log in, the behavior and it's it's a it's a it's a mixed bag because, like you said, in, in some cases, um, it, it depends on who's watching that the child. You know, sometimes there are grandparents and they're not as engaged or they're not pushing the child as much. And, uh, and they'll log in late. Um, and, you know, the attitude is kind of like, you know, I don't want to be here, but she finally made me log in. And so, you know, but um, if we even talked to our, we had a meeting with our tutors because, you know, we, we are seeing the reports about kids sometimes logging in even 20, 30 minutes late, right? And so, um, and so we asked the tutors, you know, do you want to cancel this, the session, you know, uh, if they come in late? Let me tell you something about the people who work with the kids, teachers. They were like, no, even if we got 30 minutes with them, you know, we want to yeah. spend that time. They were willing to sit there for 30 minutes waiting on the child. Now, I was willing to pull the plug, you know, because I, I said, yeah. you know, if they come in 30 minutes late, you know, I mean, feel free to cancel after 20 minutes. And they were like, no. But but anyway, so that, that's that's on the one hand, because they know that even 30 minutes of engaging that kid in their work, you know, getting them to focus, which is what our job is, you know, to help them focus in on, on their work. But on the other hand, you have some kids, they're always, you know, like uh, Tracy was saying, they log in five minutes early, you know, they're, they're, they're sitting there and they're, and they're waiting and they get into their, you know, and, um, and you see the difference in the performance you know, you of, of, a, of a child who that you see has that kind of structure and they're doing well and they're improving because they're involved in the lessons. They're really, you know, focused. Mm -hmm. And um, it breaks my heart when I, I, I know what's happening at home, you know, and we have to talk mm -hmm. to some parents because it's like, you know, his attitude and he's not listening and, you know, what's, he's not going to get a lot out of this. And that's going to translate at the end of the day to what he learns for that year and whether or not he's, our biggest concern is kids who are um, behind uh, grade level. And um, it, you know, when you work with a kid year after year and you know that that's the problem in that home and no matter what you say to that parent, um, they're, they're like, this is not important. Um, and it, it translates still over the years. 
And then, you know, we have some kids that have been with us from elementary to high school, and you could tell the ones what's happening at home. And then yeah. they, they get to high school or whatever, and, and now we're trying to push and help them graduate, you know, because, you know, they, they are still struggling with math, they're still struggling with, and it's because, well, you never took the tutoring seriously. You know, you didn't finish your iReady test. You know, we don't have anything to go by on the, uh, and so this, this, this session right here is just, just so important on, you know, everything I've heard from the parents talking about the scheduling, it's important. And I see it with my own grandkids. I had to learn myself, you know, uh, in the first few weeks of, of keeping my grandkids um, with the, um, you know, after the pandemic uh, started. And I'm working, you know, I'm working at home full time, but I had to stop. Yeah, you really are. Help, you know, <laughs> I, I had to stop and, yeah. and make sure they were focused and make sure they were treating it, you know, like a, like a job for them too. And I yeah. told them, I said, you're, your study time is, and I gave them a schedule. Now, mind you, this is what I had to figure out because at first I said, oh, they're used to doing their homework. They're going to do what they have to do. And then I go in there and they're playing games. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> they're playing games and they're not doing their studies. <coughs> so I had to make sure I was monitoring, making sure that I had them on a schedule, making sure I was going in there checking. And, uh, and then also explaining to them the importance of having a scheduling and making sure, okay, within these two hours, this is what I want you to accomplish. And the last thing I'll say is, is another ideal, really pushing them to do well. Uh, one of my granddaughters, um, I was so shocked. She had a, her, um, her lesson was she had to watch this video. Uh, it was on some animal. It was, I can't remember what it was, but it was like a, a six minute video and then she had to answer some questions. Well, she finished it in like 10 minutes, <laughs> six minutes for the video, four minutes for the question. And she thought she was free. Yeah, 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 I'm free. And so I said, okay. So I started asking her some questions. <coughs> she couldn't answer the questions because she didn't study. And so I told her, I said, you know what? <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. I said, I want you to take 30 minutes and study. There's a difference between homework and study. You yep. did your homework by answering the questions. But now that I'm asking you to explain to me what you learned, you can't explain. You're not, you, you didn't learn anything. So I said, take 30 minutes and study. Just Google, look up this animal, read everything about him, and then come back to me. And she came back to me and it was like she was reciting a dissertation. She knew so much and just 30 minutes of studying. And she learned something that day and she was just smiling. I said, did you see the difference between homework and study? You know, homework is answering the question. Study is actually learning something. And so that really taught me something. And so that's the way I treat it. You know, when, when they're here, I make sure that they're not just doing their homework, they're actually learning because um, it's gonna affect them as they go on uh, from grade to grade. So, um, you know, as, as the educator on the other side, we know the kids who are really going to, to achieve just by the study habits that they have. And uh, if you're letting them log in late, you're not teaching them. You're not, you're not helping them because that's, um, that's something that, you know, if, if you don't care, they don't care. And, um, but, it, but I think the strongest thing I'm trying to say is that as time goes on, they, they miss out. They call it learning loss, right? You're in the fifth grade. You're supposed to learn some, some certain things. If you don't learn those concepts, mm -hmm. if you get to the sixth grade, mm -hmm. you're behind. You can't understand certain things in math if you missed it out in the fifth grade. So you can't let them miss anything because everything that the teacher is giving them is based on state content standards. And it's the, it's the precursor to what they're going to get in the next grade. So if they don't get it now, and as the years go on and, and study after study has shown, this is why a lot of kids drop out by the time they get in high school because they're so far behind, uh, it's frustrating for them to be in those classes. So um, whatever they're doing in any grade is, is important. And I love parents who have kids logging in early, who make sure they're focused, they're not doing anything else and who are monitoring them 
uh, because those are the students that we see getting the A's. And by the time they get to high school, right now I'm helping several of our seniors uh, put their college applications in. And I'm sad, sad to say, um, you, I saw it like earlier, whether or not some of them are going to be able to go to the college they want um, because they have the GPA. So just, just know it all adds up and everything you're doing right now is setting them up for when they're a senior and what college they're gonna go to, what GPA they're gonna have is so, so important at every grade level. Wow. Um, that's a wonderful way to wrap it up. <laughs> Naomi, thank you so much. Um, uh, what, what, I, I, I have a quick I, I, question. I, go ahead. Sorry, how do we, um, as parents get like, if we're in, in need of, our kids are in need of tutoring and I'm speaking more so for my uh, my daughter who's, who's the ninth grader this year and. Um, Naomi, you guys tutor at the Wooten Center, right? Um, who I, just like you said right now, have been in high school right now. I, yeah, I'm sorry, my husband walked in, so I didn't hear that question. Yeah, and, and Wendy, you were breaking up a little bit. Um, how do we get our kids signed up um, for tutoring? Because I know my daughter's having a hard time. She's a ninth grader in high school and, and having some difficulty with her math classes. And I honestly, you know, it's been years and I've not, I I feel helpless not being able to help her um, where I know she is, is needing. Okay, I just put the, uh, the link uh, in, the, uh, in the chat and uh, it is free. So that's all you need to do is sign up there. And once you sign up, you'll get a letter that explains how you can book the tutor. Um, students can have up to three sessions uh, per week and each session is 45 minutes and it's one-on-one -on -one with the tutor. And uh, I, I can't stress enough the, the importance. Um, we test every tutor. Every tutor has to, you know, we make sure they know their stuff. And um, it's, 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 um, it's so helpful. You're, you're getting one-on-one, -on -one. they help them with their homework or, you know, you can take the iReady test to, to find out where they are, you know, in, in reading and math. And then their lessons are based on the results. So they're getting exactly whatever their challenges are. Um, so definitely it's, it's free thanks to our donors. And uh, all you have to do is sign up. I don't know if there's a parent who's, who's on, like Tracy, whose um, child is in tutoring right now can, can maybe uh, comment for the parents who, who want to sign up. Um, I actually was going to ask if I can make a comment. Um, one of the things I, um, I truly appreciate is the tutoring session through the Wooten Center. Um, my son, because he does, uh, like I said, homework throughout the day and it's scheduled, one of the things that um, I found was helpful because they don't give homework like they might give an iReady uh, lesson for homework, whereas once you complete the lesson, then it's completed. Um, but one of the things I found was helpful was I went to his teachers. I'm almost done with the others, but I went to his teacher, especially the ELA teacher, and I asked her, although he completes his assignment throughout the day, they have until 1159 to complete the assignment. Is it okay that he can open the assignment back up or you can resend it to him so that when he goes with his tutor, even if it's not on the day that he had the assignment, he can go over that assignment with his tutor and he can complete the assignment. And so he started actually doing that um, with his tutor, with Miss Isidra. They go over his assignments in class that he have to complete or has completed so that he can see, even if it's submitted, where he's done, what he needs to improve on. And she discusses with him the areas, even if they have to do it over. And I told him, you may not be ready for it. But even if you have to do it over, you'll get to see what areas you can improve on. And so to the tutoring, the tutoring is very, very helpful for the children. Um, even when they don't have anything to do or any assignments to do, um, the tutors do help them with something. Completing that iReady 
ELA and the iReady map is very helpful because the tutors do work with them um, on those lessons as well to help them get to the next level in the iReady session. So there's never a dull moment with tutoring for, um, for D2 because he's able to um, complete his tutoring lesson. He's able to work through the iReady lessons. That test is, is very important. Um, and then it helps him too. And even with the testing, one of the things that happened with him with iReady was that he completed the test too fast. So it placed him in an area that he already knew the, uh, the math work. He said that it was boring because he was doing the lessons. But one of the things that Mr. Casey encouraged him to do was to slow down. Don't try to go through the test so fast. Take your time so that it can place you on the right level. So that's another, um, another thing that was very helpful. Um, was that it wasn't just coming from me, but now the uh, learning process and the support is coming from the tutors. Yeah, the I Ready Diagnostic, um, the lessons that you end up getting are based on the test. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't do your best on the test, and let's say you're in the fifth grade, but you don't do your best and you score at third grade level, those, that's the lessons that you will get. So we always tell the kids, do your best. Um, even if you don't know a question, just don't answer it, it just because, because it's going to give you the lessons based on your challenges. But if there's questions that you know and you're just zooming through it, um, you're going to end up getting uh, lessons at a high level. So just always encourage the kids to do their best. Thank you so much. I will definitely look into that tonight to uh, signing, signing them up for tutoring. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, we um, our last day is December 18th, but we'll be back um, January 11th. And now if you get set up on iReady now, because they can, they can do their lessons on their own at home. So if you get them signed up on iReady now uh, over the holiday break, um, he can do, he or she can do lessons on, on their own. Thank you. You know, um, there, there's been a lot of conversation about, Naomi, you were uh, kind of summarizing the challenges of these kids not coming online on time. Um, one of the sessions, I think it was the second one, possibly, or even the first one, talked about reinforcements, right? Incentives. Um, it's important that we work with our teachers now to talk about some kind of incentive program to get them to log in on time, right? I mean, um, there's, again, in a couple of the other sessions, we talked about external motivating factors and internal motivating factors. The external piece is if they log in on time, you know, with you, that may be enough for an extra credit point here and there. I mean, you know, one of the other co comment, um, Parents on the call talked about drastic times call for drastic measures. So that may be an area to explore. How can we incentivize these kids to get to these sessions on time, especially in the incentive piece, um, they call it contingency based, but that is one of the proven ways for the low achieving student, the unmotivated. They just, as much as we hate that, um, that's one of the few things they respond to. And so the, the thinking behind that is as you externally motivate them to get there on time, they will learn because they're there on time. And if they learn, they will probably be more successful getting there 30 minutes early than 30 minutes late. And Naomi, to your point earlier, it was wonderful how she felt after her study session, how much she learned it's not so much how much she learned as it is how she felt about herself. So these are building blocks, right? So that external motivator, be it um, extra credit, whatever it is, we're motivating them into becoming an achiever. And the low achievers need that kind of external motivation to become internally motivated. Um, we, have, so we have what's called the Wooten Dollar Store, 
and yeah. kids earn dollars. Um, they earn dollars for logging in early. Um, they earn dollars for completing their sessions and they earn extra dollars by working hard, by doing extra hard. So we always tell them you earn Good dollars enough. for your participation and performance. But what we need from the parents is for you to remind them about those dollars. I just put the link in there because what's gonna happen is on, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, this coming Friday, is um, the kids get to go online to the link I just shared and they can shop using their, their Wooten dollars. And uh, there are some nice, nice gifts on there. And so we, we tell them, you know, you earn it, you know, by participating and performing uh, in your classes. But we need the parents to remind them and say, you know, you're going to pick up your six Wooten dollars today, you know, log in early because all those dollars add up. And uh, unfortunately, there's going to be some kids that are going to be really sad. <laughs> because they're going to find out they're not going to have enough dollars to to get the things that they want, but use it as a motivation for next semester. So say, OK, you didn't earn enough wooden dollars to get that that razor, you know, this time, but make sure you log in early. You're going to earn it and you can get it next time. So we just need you to remind them. So take a look at that website and use it. Wonderful. We are. This is so great. Um, well, you, you guys tell everybody about the Wooten Center. That's all I have to say, because um, you know what she's doing for our community that is in, in just so much need for this kind of activity um, is just immeasurable. Um, again, especially the struggling parent. This is so important that they that they gain the knowledge that it's going to take to make their students successful because it's there. The resources are really there. Um, so we are getting close to our time. Um, this has been a really, really stimulating conversation. And, you know, as I said, well, actually the material said networking, right? I think we talked, you know, we closed this session with the power of networking. That's what we really did. And, and it's just, it's, 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 it's very powerful. So I would encourage everybody who hasn't had a chance to take a look at the other three sessions and Use what you can. Um, it, it's a lot of material. Some things may resonate. I would just, the two things that I really want you to take away from all four sessions um, are the family meeting and the family calendar for structure. Those are the core pieces um, that I think will make a difference. And so, um, as I had mentioned before, um, I am also a foster parent um, developer for Wayfinder Family Services. So. I'm hoping in the near future that we can have an orient a Wooten orientation for foster parenting um, that I can invite everybody to. Um, and uh, you'll get some more information about that. But in the meantime, I really appreciate your time this evening and uh, take a look at the other sessions and please feel free to reach out to me anytime you want. And, and we, we can talk about things. Uh, Naomi, do you have any closing? Stuff. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, Andrew, for being here. Um, you all, we are not paying him for this, I have to say. Um, we have to talk about that for the future because he, he works he works like he's getting paid. And he agreed to do four sessions uh, this time. In the summer, we did one, but the parents wanted more. And so we did a second session. And this time, we decided to do the whole four, um, four parts. And so I... I just can't um, thank him enough. I, I mean, you're, you're perfect. You're, you're doing everything I, I hoped, you know, would, would happen. And I just want more people to take advantage of it. So we will have it posted uh, by the end of the week and share it with your friends. Tell them, sit down, take your time, because there's definitely a lot of golden nuggets uh, in here. And uh, I'm so glad to see our parents on here because we, we love our kids, you know, every, all the staff, we all grew up here in the neighborhood. We all had our own experiences. You know, I graduated from Thomas Jefferson High and didn't realize till later so much that I missed out on. And so I wanna make sure that our kids get it all. And uh, every You know what happened I, with me? You, you, you went to Jeff, huh? I did. You were a Southern League girl. I, I went to LA, I'm a Southern League boy. I played football. <laughs> Man, when we played Jeff, you guys threw rocks at our bus. Anyway, that's another story. Uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've done that. <laughs> you know.
<laughs> you know, I was out with one of the kids was. throwing rocks, but uh, yeah, you know, I should have been in class, but that's another story. I know, so. see? <laughs> I know what it's like when you missed out, you know? I, when I finally did go to college, a youth center helped me go there. I didn't have the GPA. I had missed out on a lot of classes because I cut classes. And I had to take, to take my, to pass my math placement test in college, I had to take remedial math for three semesters. It took me three semesters to pass that test. So I know what it's like to be behind because you weren't doing the right thing. And that's what we're trying to help our kids avoid is, is that kind of thing when they get to that level. You know, they, they, they dream about being lawyers and all this kind of stuff, but baby, you got, you got to learn that math now in order to be able to pass that math placement test, you know? So Andrew, I just want to say thank you. And can we all give it up for Andrew for his hard work? And uh, definitely want to continue continue this relationship. So we'll, we'll talk more later. Absolutely. You know what? I want to leave a legacy. As I told my wife and kids, when I leave this earth, I want to leave a footprint for my black kids and all my kids. Yeah. Um, you know, I, if I, I don't pass this way just to be passing. I want to make a difference. And if, and if that's what I'm doing, then my life is full. So I appreciate yeah. everybody. Have a good evening. And um, until we meet again, I will Thank you. talk to everybody soon. All right. Bye. Bless you. Bye, Naomi. See you, Doris. Let's see.